And who are we talking to? Uh, my name is Andrew Gemmel. I'm a potter here in San Diego, California. And uh, he's brought some work to our show and does a lot of chino with brushwork on, brush on it. Why don't you, Andy, why don't you explain how you do it and what you're up to? Maybe what your influence is. Um, well, I use, I use chino, which is a pretty traditional Japanese glaze, um, mainly because it has some variation to it. And, but it's also just a really good canvas, so it's a, a good background glaze. Um, and then I try and make fairly simple forms that I can use a glaze that has some variation. And then go ahead and put these decorations on here. Um, a lot of this is supposed to be sort of invoked by nature, obviously. Fish and uh, trees, willows, things, things of that such nature. And a lot of these things are um, done, uh, well, for example, let's look at this jar right here. It's a large jar. Now that's faceted. It appears to be faceted. And so how did you do that? Um, stuff like this. I'll, I'll throw this as a, as a large cylinder. It's lidded, and then I'll run my fingers up the inside. You can see inside it all. Does your camera get in there? So I'll, I'll, it'll give it kind of a an initial shape. So this has five sides on it, so I'll, I'll visually kind of mark those out. And then I'll take a rib and start altering the shape of it with that. Um, then clay being a, a transformative material, I'll let it start drying a bit to where it's easier to handle. And I'll rib it some more and paddle it to start forming the shape more. Again, letting it dry more and then come back and kind of give it its final shape. And so, see the, check out the foot on that thing too. He yeah. cut into the foot after, um, or no, actually, I used, you. I used to trim the foot out on these. These ones, I start adding a, a coil mm -hmm. to the bottom and pushing it on. That's a nice detail. It's um, seems to be a lot more effective. The the other way, it's just a lot harder to move that much clay. But something like this. This is where I would I trim out the foot, and then and then cut into it. Mm -hmm. That's nice detail too. And look at see the way the lid is has that kind of undulation to it. That's that's really nice. Yeah. And multiple glazes on the piece. And here's a little boat piece. It's hand built basically. Yeah, for the most part it's slab built. Um, these parts I throw on the wheel, but again it's it's just like building with the slab. The uh, the main part, I just make a, uh, a plywood, a simple mold, where I just cut a shape out of plywood, and it's a drape mold, so I'll suspend that off the ground, put the slab on there, tap it down, it will form into the shape, and if I want to go further, I can take something like a sock filled with sand, which is how I learned what to use, and tap it down farther to kind of accentuate that shape, and then once it gets to a, a soft, letter-hard stage, I can flip it upside down and cut it out, and then... From there, if I want to alter it some more, I can go ahead and do that or squeeze it together to kind of make the final shape. That's nice. And how about this bowl here? That looks like it's partly thrown and then a coil or a slab um, this put is, on this it. This is very similar to this where I, I, I throw the walls here. It's just a bottomless cylinder and then cut them off and, and build with these like a slab. Mm -hmm. But I still have that sort of thrown quality. But the difference where this is, this base, I throw this like a bowl mm -hmm. and then I will I will turn it over and trim it, a foot on it, and then come back and then cut it square to whatever shape I want. That's nice. And then attach these. They're and they're fairly time consuming, but it's you know I think it's the little it's detail of the little finger marks here that are left mm -hmm. shows shows how it was made and kind of the process. Yeah, I want everything to really be reflective of the the process and the material and the fact that it it is reflective of time. So that it, I wanted to show that it goes basically through a stage of being soft to a, a stone like quality. So I, I try and capitalize on on those characteristics whenever I can. Okay, thank you.